Let's look at how to solve trig equations, but with our calculator, our graphic display calculator. All right, I wanted to start with this one here because I thought it was so funny. Let's look at this. Um, see this one here, half a pi? You know why we're talking about that? Because if we're doing a unit circle going across to here, isn't that pi from zero to here? So this would be this would be one whole pi. Therefore, half a pi would be, ha, 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 it would be this piece right here. Okay. Maybe that's not a very good joke, but actually, like, I think it's kind of cute because you have to understand uh, radians in order to get this joke, right? This is actually pi over 2. <laughs> I love it. All right, so let's look at this one here. How can we uh, solve trig equations with our calculator? One generic way to do it is just to follow this. It's not exact, but it, uh, very often I'll just graph it. Now, if there's, if there's one thing to graph where we're finding zeros, I would just graph the equation. If I've got an equation where there's different things on both sides, I would graph both sides of the equation separately. Make sure you check for your mode. So should you be in radians or degrees? That's an important one. Make sure you check the domain and range because maybe they give you some restrictions on your x's and y's. And then, well, depending on what you're doing, if it's something blah, blah, blah equals zero, then find the zeros. If you're setting an equation equal to another, like one side of the equation equal to the other side, then find the intersection. A lot of people might be tempted to use this sort of solver. The problem with this, especially in trigonometry, is you're going to miss other solutions. It's only going to give you one answer. If you suspect more than one answer, don't use a solver. Okay? It's, it's, I think it's a better idea to look at the graph especially, so you can use your brain to tell you what to do. Let's see what we can do here. I've got two examples to show you. One is sine squared x plus sine x equals 2, where we go from 0 to 2 pi. Now, you could have done this one by hand. In fact, it's very similar to another example I showed you in another video. If you're doing these in order, it was the one just before, where you know you could have actually seen this here as, uh, just to show you, you could have said sine x equals, I'll just call it an x here, just off to the side. Then that would make it x squared plus x minus 2 equals 0. I could factorize that. Let's see, I would get, um, uh, what would that be? That would be x minus, what would that be? x plus 2 and x minus 1 equals 0. Therefore, it would really be, keep in mind, it wasn't just x's, it was sine x's. So I'll replace with sine x's. So sine x plus 2 and sine x minus 1 equals 0. Mm, this one here can never be, because sine x can never be equal to 9 minus 2, so that will cancel out. I'm just trying to show you, we could have done it by hand. But I could say that sine x equals 1, that'll work. And when is sine x equal to 1? I can think about a uh, unit circle. When is the y value of a unit circle here? When is the y value equal to 1? That's right up here, straight up. So in fact, that uses that dumb joke we just talked about here, straight up here, that's at pi over 2. So my answer then would be pi over 2. That will be my answer for x. Oops, I should maybe write a little bit clearer. So x equals pi over 2. Now keep in mind I did it quickly because I've already shown you how to do it by hand. I mean, the other question, I start off with a 1 minus cos squared, just there was one little step to do, but that was it. Let's see how to do it on a calculator instead. So here what I would suggest is we have one equation on the left side, we have one side of it, and we have the other side. So I would actually graph these two things separately. I would graph the equation y equals sine x. Keep in mind, your calculator can't do sine squared x, so you have to do sine x squared. Be careful with your parentheses here, plus sine x. Do that. And another equation, graph y equals 2. And do that on your calculator. So let me get out my calculator and do what I said. I'll go to graph. And let me just do this. i got to make sure I'm in radian mode, not degree mode. So I'll switch that one. All right, let's make it sine x. I'll do a brackets here, and I'll say sine x. And all that squared. And then I make uh, it plus just sine x sine x, there we go, and graph, e. And then I do y equals 2. That's my other equation. So I'll press tab here and do another equation. I say y equals 2. Pew. Now I need to be careful for my domain here, only between 0 and 2 pi. So in this case I can go to menu, I can do window maybe, and I'll do window settings, and I'll set it from 0. And here I can actually say 2 times, and I can even put in pi. If I want it exactly the way I want it, I can say pi. And say go. Well, now it looks a little bit nicer. Do you notice what it looks like here? I can do this sketch, couldn't I? So it's some graph that goes sort of up 
and does some sort of wiggly things. It all depends on how high I'm going with my axes here. I could have done it, you know, maybe I could have zoomed in a little bit with the the box here. I could have made it, you know, I don't know, minus three or something to three and see what that looks like. Does that look better? Yeah, that looks a little bit nicer. So I'm going to attempt to do this graph right here. I'm going to try to do that sketch. Okay, so it goes up, then it goes down a little bit and down a little bit. Let me see if I can draw that. A rough sketch, keep in mind. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then it went sort of down a little bit, didn't it? Something, something kind of like that. This was x, this is y. And where did it cross? Let's see on my graph right here. It crossed it, well, it doesn't look like it, but actually it crosses it, uh, well, only once. I think it's only going to touch it once. We could zoom in to do that, or we can know it just kind of from what we did over here. It's only going to do it once. But let's, let's see if it really does. So this one right here seems to just touch it right at the very, very top. So I'll do that as my other equation here. That'll be my graph of y equals 2 down here. Boom. So this will be y equals 2. So I've done my two different graphs, right? I've got y equals 2 here. That'll be 1, presumably. So there's my graph of sine squared x plus sine x, and this is my y equals 2. And where do they meet? Because that's the whole point of an equal sign. I need to find out where do they intersect. Well, that'll be right here. All right, so I'll do the intersection here. And let's ask your calculator for the intersection. So I go to menu, I do analyze, and I say intersection. It says lower bound, somewhere down here, upper bound, somewhere up here. Hey, look, it's approximately equal to 1.57. So that's what I get. I get that x equals, this is 1.57-ish. So let me just say, so x equals approximately 1.57 radians. That would be my answer. And if you're not sure, like, hey, is that really pi over 2? Well, let's try it. I'll open up a... Uh, New calculator, maybe. Oh, never mind. I'll go to, yeah, it doesn't matter. I'll do a new one. I'll do a new calculator, and I'll say, what is pi divided by 2? What is that? Hey, look, it's 1.57. So do you notice then? So this is, you know, this is equal to pi over 2. So it's the same thing. So notice this was right, but so is this. It all depends on what you need to use and what tools you're allowed to use for a question. All right, let's do this one right here. It looks a little bit tougher. By the way, I like this. Just fell asleep at the beach, woke up with a hideous tan line. Get it? It's a graph of tangent. And it's even right. Look, because it goes from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, and it goes like this. So that's actually brilliant. I really like that one. So we're supposed to solve for x in this big mess, and we have these limitations on x. Here I would say do the same idea here. I would just graph, right? So I would graph uh, this first equation, right? y equals 2 times tan. Sometimes on a calculator, if you just say 2 tan, it doesn't work. So be careful to put the 2 times tan. Open bracket, uh, 0 0.5. That's the same thing as a half times open bracket like this. And I'll graph another equation, which is y equals 1. And let's see what we get. Make sure I'm in radian mode because I've got some pies going on. huh? So I'm still in radian mode. That's good. I'll go to add page, new graph. And let's just do exactly what I said I would do here, times... 2 times tangent of, here I put in 0 0.5 uh, times, um, open bracket, and I say x minus 4. Now I've got close, close brackets. That's good. So boom, I've got that big mess. E. Um, maybe I should graph my other one as well. So y equals 1. Boom. So here, it intersects a lot of times. In fact, it intersects infinite number of times because tan repeats. So now we've got to think about where are our limitations from minus pi to 3 pi. All right, so let me put that in as my window. So I'll say window settings. And I'll get, go from minus pi. I like how you can actually type in that. That's actually pretty awesome. To 3 times pi. Tab, and let's just go let's see what it looks like. There's my graph. So I need to try to draw this, okay? I'm going to draw this going like this, right? And then another one over there. So I'll attempt to do this at least. So let me see if I can do that there. So something like this. So it goes like that and like that, a little piece there. Let me try to draw that. So it goes something like that, something like this, and then a little piece there doesn't have to be perfect, but something like that. And my intersection was somewhere up here, right, with some line going across like this, so like that. 
and uh, this is my x-axis, this is my y-axis, and then I have to find the intersections. Now keep in mind, I didn't draw it perfectly, did I? Because uh, the intersection was, oh, it was actually way over here. Oops. Uh, you know what I'll do? I'll just move this one. That's really cheap, isn't it? I'll just be like, there you go, that looks more like it. Something like that. So there's intersections, aren't there? There's different places where these two things meet, because that's the whole point, is left side equals right side. So when does this graph meet that graph? Only here and here. There's only two places between minus pi and three pi where they meet. All right, let's go ahead and find them. Guess what I do here? I do intersection, don't I? Well, that's what I have to do here, so intersection. So that's what I'll do, I'll ask my calculator for that. All right, so calculator, tell me please, menu, analyze, intersection, and I go from here to here. Hey, it's minus 1.36, so I'll write that down. So x1 equals approximately minus 1.36 radians. And what's my second one? I do the same thing, so menu, analyze, intersection, go from here to here, and this is uh, 4.93. All right, so x2 is approximately equal to 4.93 radians. There we go, we're done. So you can see we can save a lot of time by using our calculator if we're allowed to use it. But keep in mind, you still have to understand a little bit what you're trying to do. If you want to do these by hand, sometimes you know they are more involved, like this is a little bit sneakier to do it by hand for sure. Or you can just do it with a calculator. It all depends on what tools you feel like using for the question or in the terms of a test or an exam, what you're allowed to use. But there you go. Hope this is helpful on how to solve sort of more complicated things with your calculator.